Um, right now, I'm making good progress here. Mineral E, let me draw mineral E uh, here. Mineral E doesn't look like much in PPL. It is color less in PPL and it has low relief. So if the neighboring minerals, such as the biotite or the garnet, uh, stand out of the thin section or appear to stand out of the thin section, the uh, quartz, which mineral E is, and the feldspars, will sit lower down. So the low relief minerals are, well, named low relief because they have the appearance of sitting deeper in the thin section as because they have a lower refractive index. In uh, XPL, mineral E, well, I've already told you it's quartz, has first order gray biofringence colors. So E first order gray. I've drawn it in two kinds of extinction here. This particular grain goes into unit extinction, but this one here goes into undulose extinction. There's this, what I call a wave of darkness traveling through the grain as you rotate the stage in XPL. So it goes into both unit and for other crystals, undulose extinction. So the undulose extinction indicates that this, that the crystal lattice of the quartz has been warped during the metamorphism. So mineral E is quartz. That leaves one more mineral to be uh, identified. This mineral looks just like mineral E in uh, PPL, except that sometimes, or actually quite often, it will look a bit dirtier in PPL. So in F, uh, in PPL, F is color less and has low relief but may have a dirty altered appearance. This is because mineral F weathers more quickly and more readily than the quartz. And uh, XPL mineral F is very easy to identify because it displays this very characteristic lamellar twinning. We should all know what that mineral is by now. Mineral F also goes into first order gray uh, biofringence colors, but it features this lamellar twinning, which go into oblique extinction and XPL and the angle 
the 2V angle uh, between the uh, extinction of the lamellae is of course indicative of the sodium calcium ratio in this plagioclase feldspar because that's what it is. F is plagioclase felt spa. All right, we're almost done. Um, we have all the minerals identified. So, let me see if the video still works. Yeah. So now, um, we have to finish the thin section description by adding a bit at the beginning and at the end. In the beginning, I'll write a brief intro. Thinking and writing together, not easy. Introduction. So this rock is a medium grained that means millimeter sized crystals if you compare the size of the um, plagioclase of course the biotides the selenite and the garnet to the scale bar here the uh, grain size is about millimeter so that's really a grain size that you can see with the naked eye so this is definitely not a slate it's also not a nice because uh, a nice would be much more coarsely grained. So it's medium grained. It's definitely metamorphic because we have some characteristic metamorphic index minerals. The garnet and the selimanite are uh, metamorphic minerals. You would not find them in igneous uh, rocks. Uh, with a strong foliation. Foliation means that the minerals are preferentially oriented along a certain direction. They align themselves, especially the biotite, they align themselves along the sense of shear that has formed this rock uh, when it was in the subsurface. And a crude Compositional separation into mafic layers made of garnet. Oh, me. Biotite Selimanite and Garnet Pore Feral Blasts. So we have this crude layering, this mineral this rock is on the verge of segregating and separating itself into dark layers which are made of biotite, selimanite and garnet. These garnets having overgrown the minerals around it and that's why we call them porphyroblasts. And felsic layers made of the quartz and the feldspars.
Right, so that's the introduction and now the, uh, the conclusion. Conclusion and modal analysis. Actually, uh, the opaques uh, have make up about 5% of the rock. The garnets, I would say, 20%. The selenite, perhaps 15%. The biotite, quite a lot. Let's give it 30%. If you want to do this very precisely, you would have to draw you have to divide your thin section up into a grid and count the occurrence of the minerals, but uh, we don't have time for that. 20% of quartz and plagioclase, 10%. So in conclusion, the garnet and the selimanite, they are index minerals. So that means that these minerals are formed in a relatively narrow range of pressures and temperatures which allow us to reconstruct the geologic history of this rock. The quartz and the feldspars, for example, uh, are not good index minerals because they can grow pretty much in any uh, environment. So they are index minerals for medium grade regional metamorphism. It's not low grade because then the grain size would be smaller. It's not high grade because the grain size would be larger and we would have lost the foliation and the rock would have completely segregated into felsic and uh, mafic layers. So this is a biotite garnet selimanite schist. The naming of metamorphic rocks is quite easy. <laughs> Just give the rock based on the grain size, and give the main name based on the, the grain size and the metamorphic texture, and then you just add all the index minerals in front of it. And this garnet mica schist formed at a depth of perhaps 10 to 15 kilometers in the middle of the crust, which is corresponds to pressures of 3 to 4 kilobars, 3 to 4,000 atmosphere. And temperatures of 350 to 550 degrees centigrade. So from the temperature and the uh, and the depth, you can uh, conclude that well, you can see that regional metamorphism really takes place in areas of a normal thermal gradient of about twenty to thirty degrees per kilometer. So that is the kind of metamorphism that takes place when two continents collide. So places where those processes are occurring right now are the Alps or the Himalayas or in the past the uh, Hercynian orogeny which has affected the Appalachians in the uh, United States or the Caledonites that have affected uh, Scotland and Wales. So that's it, that's your thin section description, an introduction. Uh, about the texture of the rock, a description of all the minerals found in it, a modal analysis, and a brief story uh, interpreting the petrogenesis of this particular rock.